everyone! So welcome if you are new here and welcome back if you are returning to 1111 Talk Show. Today in this episode I'm over the moon to be going and meeting home based illustrator. I don't think so. Most of us know how he actually looks like. So yeah, I'm super excited because I think a lot of us have been sharing his designs online shamelessly and I'm quite excited to meet him in person. So yeah, let's show my love of game of show. And let him see. Behind home illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> so guys. Well, good. I think thank you so much for agreeing to wake up very early on a Sunday. Uh, no worries, <laughs> really no worries. Really That's it. how we help each other. So how was your thing? Climbing up the stairs? It was good. <laughs> ah, I think we would say like a pretty good exercise to start off with. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the, the most challenging part, no? We are even our client face, so <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> you have to climb up really high. Mm -hmm. This is where I sit. This is my basically my setup, my office. Mm -hmm. And here, two of my friends they sit. Oh, so okay, basically, yes. uh, I work uh, for Ox Media. Yes. So I'm part of that team. So what we do is we kind of bring in all the projects, mm -hmm. uh, big projects. Mm -hmm. Then we all come on board and we work together on that project. Oh, great. And yeah, when there's no project, what we can do is we can work on something which you're very interested. So that's something very interesting thing happening here. Oh, so okay. this is where they sit. So mm -hmm. I'll show you around. So this is basically uh, what we call our conference room, oh. our printing. Right now we are going to start with something uh, very different. So we haven't started with that one. So mm -hmm. we are, what we are going to do is, you know, uh, have some kind of printing, I think, uh, souvenirs. So we're going to start with that one. So yeah, so this is where our videographer, he sits. Oh, okay, nice. And I think of all the rooms, this is the most expensive room. <laughs> <laughs> because of this, this one, that one. So you know, if someone wants to come here and take anything, you should come into this room and do all of this. So you basically, this is the, the most expensive room. Oh, you, must, <laughs> you must be the first person to actually open the welcome burglars in the kingdom. So this, and we have a small country kitchen here. So basically, yeah, that's it. So this is where we work, and this is where most of uh, the art which I create happens. So in the thinking process, it starts from something like this, wow. then it goes into our two writers. Ah, so we nice. work on project. Then I start building the main. The artistic frame. Right. So this is <laughs> our new uh, t-shirt printing press. Are we expecting like t-shirts printed with illustrations uh, from yeah. home-based illustrator? Uh, I now? think that's what we are going for, but we'll see. Because mm -hmm. it's not just about just having the prints on the t-shirts. Mm -hmm. uh, on the way there are lots and lots of challenges, mm -hmm. but I think my two friends they, they are the, the, the better person suited to tackle all these challenges. Yeah, so uh -huh. I just take care of the art part. Uh -huh. So I think, yeah, we'll be there. There are so many interesting things coming up. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, we can take a seat. You want to take a seat? Yeah, I think. Yeah. I, think uh, I still have my questions. By the way, those were not part of the questions. <laughs> okay, so now that we have sat down, I think I'll get straight to the questions mm -hmm. because people would love to hear you speak more than I. <laughs> <laughs> because like I was mentioning before, it's all like um, we always get to see the amazing art you create online but we don't really see the face behind those illustrations. That's the most frequently asked question on even on my Instagram, you know? uh, who are you? So, <laughs> so basically what I say is you know, uh, your art, not necessarily your art but whatever you do, the work should speak for itself. So in my case, it's my art. So what I see is, if you are well connected with my art, and if you can, you know, fill the story that I want to tell through my arts, 
than me as an artist. So you know, my job is done. So basically, that's me. Yeah. So that's the storyteller. So that's me. So. Well said, I think. And for those of you who have asked, who are you? To always <laughs> illustrators. So this is who he is. <laughs> Let's start at the beginning. Oh, okay. So. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you co-founded Ox Media, which is like a media consultancy, right? And multimedia consultancy, I would say. But uh, to most of us, uh, especially for people like me, you became like a favorite and go-to illustrator or designer, like who's... Uh, art we shamelessly shared <laughs> on our like instagram pages whenever there is like an event or like a google observance day so how did uh, ox media and uh, home based illustrated happen for you what's your design story uh, how did designing happen for you thank you for sharing my art so <laughs> i should narrate my story from the beginning i think so i started working as an intern uh, at queensland so it was right after I finished my college, so I had a BCA degree. But the thing was, I really wanted to pursue design. Mm -hmm. So I think basically that's what I was going for back then as well. So then I joined Queensland, but I was an intern. So I think there I learned almost all the tools, the design tools. So that's where I actually practically did everything and learned. So for a year I was there. Then I started uh, working at Scan Cafe. Nice. So there, uh, also I was there for like three years. So there, what I did was I learned about photography, the coloring, the especially something to do with color and images. So there, I was introduced to that chapter. So then I learned that there. Then after that, I worked in one of the multimedia company, private company. So there, what I learned was I learned about. The, the art of animation, the art of storytelling, the video, art of videography. So yeah, basically all those experiences put together and whatever I'm doing. So that's the, the, the whole, you know, uh, summarized thing. So whatever I'm doing right now is all combination of all those, whatever experience I've gained. So that's the thing. And uh, the house media thing is the two of my friends who are the, the founder of the, co uh, I think the founder of the house media. I know them personally because when I was working in Queensland, so I got to meet them. So they are both uh, reporters, they were back then. Then what we did was, I think it was before the COVID. So we were working on one project and I didn't know like one of my friends, he was part of that project. So mm -hmm. the, that person, he called me to so I have a sort of meeting and then he showed up and I think I said, oh, I know him. Then that's how we got connected back. Then he said he was also, uh, he had left his job. Then once we were done with this project, so I think, yeah, so basically at first it started by sharing our office. Mm -hmm. So for to do some projects and everything, uh, we were using one of the office, which was not even his or mine. So we were both sharing someone else's office. <laughs> so there, uh, we met our another the, the friend who is a part of Ox Media. Then three of us said, you know, let's venture into this thing. One has a writing background, one has a research background, and me, I am very much interested in to do uh, arts and all. So I said, no, three of us put together, we can do something else. So then that's how we all started. A dream, in <laughs> fact, like a writer and researcher and then an amazing illustrator <laughs> together. <laughs> so yeah, you started with the Kinsel where you interned and then you learned about the tools and then uh, after that you, you know, all this happened. Like, was that sort of like an intentional projection for this or like you were just doing it as it came along? Uh, I don't know about everyone but I am sort of person Usually for the, the, the work process, yes, I do a very much like detailed work plan and everything, but you know, as in like a part of a life, usually when things happen for you, the, the, the best part of life is when you don't plan something and you know, all those pieces fall together and you know, it makes a way for you. So that's the best feeling which you can feel and know no, about the life. So basically, uh, my journey itself, I didn't plan to be what I'm right now or do what I'm doing right now because at that time, uh, taking art professionally as a job, 
it was kind of crazy to all the people because this even I strongly uh, think uh, when I think about that no back then uh, my families especially my relatives my friends what they what they had the notion was art is an interest you cannot pursue art and make living out of that that was the notion back then of course now everything has changed you know with the time with the technology but back then it was like that so it was very challenging to convince you know people like okay you can do now i also know that you know, it was a time like when there weren't many illustrators and especially digital illustrations mm -hmm. right and when i came back from college i wanted to do writing and like like you said you know um it was a difficult thing right because uh, you weren't paid as much mm -hmm. and you had to make your living while at the same time pursue your own passion right mm -hmm. so have you had like similar struggles when you were venturing into this new passionate journey of yours uh, <laughs> and how did you overcome it okay. that's a very interesting question actually because i think i had my share of experience down the line in the same thing mm -hmm. sometimes i still remember you know i having zero balance you know mm -hmm. basically you going broke uh, sometimes you having sleepless night mm -hmm. worrying how do you pay the next bill you know then because when you are the sole bread on of the family you have to think about the the other person sure. then there was how okay that's okay for me but now how do i help you know if something happens how do they live up with that one so there was so much pressure in that but at the same time i i didn't want my passion to go away or you know just i don't want to give up on that one so the sacrifice which i made was a personal sacrifices so there was sleepless night like i said so even i remember the when i was working in my offices other offices just to save some amount i used to walk even the distance was like in an hour or so so i used to walk there then i used to walk back home then so these are the basic you know thing that a lot of things happen so basically all this added up and i think i was very fortunate enough so i specifically remember that one art I think also you might also remember the Gelsey Bong down down to Fortki. Mm -hmm. So that was picked up, and I was very fortunate to be blessed by His Majesty. So His Majesty ordered me a seller for that artwork, and that and that's it. So from that, so everything you know started falling into places. Uh, even though I don't earn that much right now, but I'm content and I'm happy of what I make, and at least I can help my my uh, families i can help any other so i think that came as a blessing so yeah so that started that gave a boost you know so i was very confused back then but once that happened that was a boost okay you should do that you could you, sh you could do that and you should pursue that as a career then after that i just took off and i, I think i ventured into the, the world of arts and illustrations and yeah so that's what i'm doing right now so that's the basically that's the start <laughs> i'm so happy for you because i think you're so talented like from your designs you know and i think you deserve whatever happened to you like after that and we're so glad you didn't give up or else we will not have home best illustrator <laughs> right now <laughs> I think you yeah, thank you, thank mentioned you, so much. you know, yeah. thank you so much for sharing your story. I think a lot of people will find it inspiring, especially in this creative field where you always have to think twice about financial freedom and then something that makes you content yeah. and happy, you know? <coughs> so I think you already mentioned about one of the moments where uh, His Majesty picked up the art and then granted so. Yeah. Right? Do you have any other like career moments like that, that you value the most? I mean, even though your initial uh, journey was a struggle, you know, but now be where you are, mm -hmm. do you have such similar big career moments? I still remember now, the first work I did was a logo design, mm -hmm. which was very simple. And, uh, you know, uh, it was for, I think back then, 5,000, I think, 5,000, I got a 5,000. So it was a 5,000 project. 
So what I did was I said, okay, I'll try because that was my first paying job. <laughs> So what I did was even the tools which I learned, no, I had no experience. It was just out of learning and doing and learning at the same time. So you do it, you make mistakes, you learn. Then I made, then I delivered the work, and the client was happy. Okay, you did it, and he paid me in cash. So it was like five thousand money. I was literally shaking because you know it was my first time seeing five thousand together, you know, in a cash getting paid for something which I loved, my work. So I literally hold very tight to the money. I put it in my pocket. And I think I, the first thing I did was I went home and I shared the story to my parents. Like, you know, I got this much. I was, I was very happy actually. So that happiness, I think uh, whatever I'm doing right now, all those, happy things I don't think it can ever replace that moment because that was you know I can still feel it the, the, the same 5,000 all together holding it tight you know, shaking because you are literally happy and at the same time you you earned from your own you know whatever uh, your passion you know so you were earning from your passion so from there then I knew like okay they I can do it because you know I did that now I can maybe do more so then I started doing some more some more some more and all those more accumulated together and it pushed me so I think that 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 is maybe a biggest turning point you know where I did for something and where I was get uh, I'll, I get thing I paid for that one so yeah thank you for sharing yeah. those moments with us I think that was really inspiring yeah Okay, um, now let's get to something a little lighter. No. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. We, we should listen up because I think it's getting very <laughs> no, emotional. No. No, but I think it's really inspiring. Like, because, you know, you being so openly sharing the story, we never know how many lives it could touch, right? I think a lot of the time we are so used to being so closed up. And when it comes to fields like this and taking up your passion, we do need stories like mm -hmm. this so that people do take a leap of faith and you are doing justice yeah. to this and we are happy with it. I mean, like, you're a great designer right now, but I'm pretty sure like in the beginning it was all trial and error. Yeah, exactly. So do you have any funny story like when you actually are uh, starting out on your first design? Yeah, I think I uh, have that uh, incident. The, the, the moment you asked me about the question, I remembered that particular thing mm -hmm. when I was working in uh, the Queensland and I made a design. So the thing was, I, I was very inexperienced, no? but someone who wanted to learn everything in one go. That's how I would describe myself back then. Even though I'm doing it right now, but it's right now it's, it's all balanced. But back then I was like, you know, I want to learn everything, but I want to take less time. <laughs> at one go. So what happened was uh, I was learning Photoshop, I was learning, learning InDesign, I yeah, illustrated everything together. Then uh, my first book, uh, it was a report book I think <coughs> back then. So what I did was the report book, I designed everything, I put together the, everything. The funny thing was the left page was inserted in the right, and the right one's in the left. So it was all the book was kind of uh, you can open it from the back side, no? So, so that's where I made a mistake, and uh, and I still remember, like you know, uh, not admitting to like you know having some kind of because of course when you're working you have your own reasons, and I was like trying to justify like no 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 I'm something new I'm learning so yeah so that that happened uh, and not just that. You know, there were lots and lots of mistakes which I made. You make a mistake, but through many mistakes you rectify and the output, it will be good. So yeah, <laughs> so make mistakes, but learn from mistakes. Just enjoy the process. process. Yeah. So don't be afraid <laughs> to make, make mistakes, mistakes, even if it means printing the whole book. But <laughs> like I said, don't make mistakes at the cost of you know, <laughs> others, like uh, the, the, the work and also. You can make mistakes and you can learn on your own. Okay, um, what's your creative process like to, uh -huh, okay. you know, like get the final um, illustrated? 
So work. I think uh, all, when I initially started and what I'm right till now, my process it hasn't changed much, but of course, in a way the 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 there is like more breakdown to the process now, but overall process it remains same. So basically, my always my end goal is to tell a story. So it's always to tell a story because you know uh, to to give you a small thing, you know. Back then, when there was no television, uh, our days we had no mobile. There was no entertainment. But our form of entertainment was the oral story. Mm. Our grandfather, grandmother, they telling us a story. The, the fairy tales, the Buddhist folklore. It was a very interesting thing, you know. Mm. The, the candle flickering. You, you just picture in a room, dark room, the amber burning, the can, candle flickering, and your, the, someone narrating a story, you know, like with actions and everything. So that was sort of a... Uh, entertainment for me growing up special so then I, I think I was I grew very close to the stories even now my my part time whenever I make something I uh, tend to listen to uh, audio the story audio books and all so yeah so then now coming back to the process so in my process the storytelling is very important because like I said I how I connect to that so that's the first thing what I do is I kind of build an overall timeline. So usually if it's an uh, illustration, I kind of have an idea of how my final uh, art is supposed to look or what is supposed to tell the story, what is going to tell. So I had that idea, but I don't know exactly the colors, the, the, the mood and everything. So I have that story. So first thing I do is I have that. So that's my, uh, when I make a personal art. Mm -hmm. Now when I work on the stories, or uh, when I get a manuscript, what I do is I go through all the manuscript, then what I do is I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I have a, uh, one flow of story. Story, yeah. Mm -hmm. So after that, then what I do is, uh, now coming back to my personal mm -hmm. the art making process. So what I do is now I just randomly scribble on my, uh, at the drawing pad. So at that time what I'm trying to do is see how my art is going to tell a story in a very visually pleasing. Mm -hmm. So I try to do there is no precise you know, uh, number of times you have to do but you know I try to do around three to four times like changing the, the character, flipping everything. Then the next process after that comes is you selecting your colors. Okay. Right? So the overall mood, you know, even the color has a story. So mm -hmm. red, it has its own story. Blue, it has its own story. So usually, uh, the, even in when I give small classes, so basically I focus more on the color theories. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so colors also has its own story. So now, back of my head is going, like, okay, let's say for example, uh, a, a kid is running with a kite. Mm -hmm. So that's my story, mm -hmm. how I want to picture it. Now, in there, uh, I already have a story, I have already laid down some foundation of the basic lines. Now I want to put the colors. Mm -hmm. Now it's all about how you want to show the mood. A kid can find the kite in a rainy day, mm -hmm. sunny day, windy. So there are lots of moods. Mm -hmm. So basically if you want to instill some happiness in your uh, the audience, you basically use warm colors. Mm -hmm. Bright sky, uh, which is basically which I use more for most of my illustrations. So. You know, uh, it's a very funny thing. Like most of the people, they say, like, why is your uh, art work always happy? <laughs> there is no dark colors in your thing. No, I mean the dark color in the sense, it's always happy. If you look in my art, so it it is happy. But because I want to instill that happiness through my art, so yeah. So in the process, so then you have the basically we call this color mood. Mm -hmm. So you just color put in color. Now you have your color, you have your rough work, rough sketch. Now what you do is you build on, on top of that. Mm -hmm. So then after that, once you're done, you're done with the story. So basically this the small steps which I follow for my personal artworks. Mm -hmm. But if it's for the clients, there's always 
uh, to and fro the feedback. Mm -hmm. So I do the rough sketch, I send it them, they have the feedback, I incorporate that feedback, so it goes back. But the overall process is the same, you know, basically at the end of the day, you have to tell a story. It's, in our book, is, uh, there is one Japanese artist here, Miyazaki. What he does is, when he is making an animation, what he does, he paints one scene, mm -hmm. one particular scene, but he makes that scene so beautiful, then the whole story concept builds on that yeah, scene. And he makes a movie out of that. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, there's, in art, there's no start, there's no end. You can start anywhere, you can end anywhere because you have all the freedom. So some they build the whole story around one scene. Even in terms of books also, children's book, it happens. You make one scene, you build the children's book around that scene. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have a script, you build your art around that script. So it's kind of flexible, the, 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 the process, but overall the, the process remains the same. So that's basically how I follow. That's my process. I think maybe that's why, like, I think that's why, like, a lot of people love your art because you focus on storytelling and how it can connect with people, right? And mm -hmm. just like in songs, like when you have emotions, you connect to it more. So I think maybe I am not good or not even. I don't know. I don't even know how to <laughs> paint, but but you can just feel it. Like you can, you can just get the story out of yeah, it. Yeah. So you know, to yeah. to add on that's one thing. What you said is totally correct, and. If you look at my art, not the, the the sometimes my leg would even not look like a leg if I draw a person. <laughs> but the basic thing is, you know, is the story that's important to me. So I tend to work very fast because in terms of illustrations, they say like artists need to have patience. But I think I'm the <laughs> impatient artist. <laughs> so like you know, I tend to make so fast. Sometimes if you look the hair, it just look like a hair, but you know. It, it's they are just resembling that shape even the leg okay you know that's a leg but if you go and look into it there's no much details sometimes the, even the leg will look like a rubber band no? <laughs> so you know art every artist they have their own style so as an art you also you like you said you know you don't know you you are not good at art but I feel like everyone is good at art because when we are small when we are young there is an artist in, in each artists. and every one of us. Mm -hmm. So now whatever I'm doing right now is the artist that survived, you know, so he's making that. Mm -hmm. So it's, everybody is gifted. Everybody is an artist, everybody is a storyteller. It's just that when we grow up, we tend to go into our different field of interest and we tell a story there. So, you know. But like, how do you, you know, like, unstuck yourself creatively because for me like because i do post copies right so whenever there is like commercial ads like mm -hmm. whatever the designer puts on the um design i work on those mm -hmm. texts yeah. but sometimes you just get stuck you, yeah. like, it doesn't come mm -hmm. easily so you know uh <laughs> to be creative sometimes you have to just not be creative that's <laughs> the the, <laughs> the best solution because uh, you know sometimes you just have to let it go like you know because what happens is when you try to think so much and put in so much all your energy is gone into thinking mm -hmm. or making it making that best right. not into actually making it best so you're constantly thinking how can I make it best how can I make it best so now you're pressuring yourself mm -hmm. then when the moment you are pressured you no know, things won't flow the way you want it so you know sometimes to be creative just be don't be creative just let it happen and if you are still having, uh, you know, you say a writer's block, so for artists, I don't know what it's called, artist block maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you sort of have that feeling, so what I do is usually I stop whatever I'm doing. So I do something else. But the something else is also to do with my art. For me, to mm -hmm. take a break from art, I do art. art. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of crazy, but you know, so that's how it is, but I do something different. So I have that like of doing multiple projects at a time. So I do a children's book here, I do a design here. So whenever I am stuck here, I come here and do. When I'm doing this, uh, the other world, I think of that one, I get some ideas, I come back, I do that. You can do this process or if you're really stuck, you just take a walk. 
you mentioned a little bit before what purpose like does your do you intend for your illustrations or artwork to serve you mentioned a little bit before mm -hmm. but more on that <laughs> yeah. so usually <coughs> uh first thing is like when i'm whenever i make an illustration or an art is when i initially started my instagram page there were i think four to five followers mm -hmm. uh, that's i mean like, not that account but it was four to five even though they were just four to five i did the same art like i do it right now mm -hmm. so you know initially when i began with my instagram career it was private mm -hmm. profile so whatever i was making i was just putting it there so that i can see for myself mm -hmm. what are the changes i made how much i learned mm -hmm. so basically it was something yeah of course and like i said to make myself happy you know? mm -hmm. i had that happiness when i was doing that work the art work so basically for that one i did but i think i was so blessed that people started appreciating people started uh, loving my art work then i was in that way it was so blissful then i started sharing my uh, joy for art with the people and i think that the joy it only increased from sharing so now when I look back and see my artwork, of course, the things I've learned uh, in between those, there's huge change. Even though if I compare my today's art and tomorrow's art, I might not see that much change. But if I compare uh, three years, four years down the line and now, there's huge change. I can feel that. And now once you feel the change, it only helps you to keep going because you know Oh, I can do that. No, I can do that. So basically, for me, it serves as an to check in, like you know, how much I've learned and uh, I mean, how it can push me. So for me, that that is there uh, with this artwork. And for people, I think through my artwork, I just want to tell a story uh, they can feel, which is very relevant because that's something which you are making personally and it's not given like you know they will like it sometimes it will go other way around they will not like it they will not connect so what then so but i think now it's i can say like you know they are happy they i always get a warm uh, feedbacks like seeing your art the, your artwork it inspires us it makes us happy. I think everybody would share my opinion that it is serving its purpose. And I like how you put it, you know, like it has never been about popularity, but it has always been more about sharing sure. your story, you know. So now I think I would like to ask you a few questions on behalf of, like, I think people who are starting out mm -hmm. as illustrators awesome. or designers or storytellers mm -hmm. or who are thinking of venturing into this field. Um, so, do you think um, a professional degree or an education in design course would help you to become a successful designer or would it just solely be dependent on how inherently creative a person is and how much effort that person puts in? So, I think uh, on that, you know, I can uh, start off by comparing how I Learn. So basically, if you look into my stories, uh, I never did a degree in art or I never had a sort of uh, exposure to especially the, the, the basic trainings on how do you want to do or you know how to make an art. So what I did was I learned through books, especially through books because when I was learning and when I was doing it, the internet was not so popular at that time. So I had to learn through books. I had an old computer, it was very old, you know, so sometimes I had to like just smack it to start it. So, <laughs> so on, on that I learned with basic things like the, the software and the tool, it was a mouse. Mm -hmm. So I learned on that, I learned uh, by learning and by looking and by reading books. So that's how it started everything. Then I think it was only around 2017 or 18, I knew like there was something called drawing tablet yeah, wherever you can draw and thing, you know. I, I wasn't aware of that once because I was simply doing it on a mouse. Mm -hmm. 
then I came to know about that one. So, and like I said, I was very fortunate. You know, I think in my whole process, there there are ups and downs, but on a way, like I was very fortunate to have all those things. So, the the company which I was working for, they provided me with that one. So I got to learn with that one, and that was so much better than uh, what I used to do with the mouse. So. Uh, I learned with that one. Then after that, I kind of jumped to the next tool, which I use it right now. So basically, yeah. So you start from the basic. You don't directly jump into something advanced. No, don't just jump into doing something big. You start small. You do small. Obviously, if you put your heart and soul into something, you'll be rewarded. There's no doubt in that. You'll be rewarded. So now coming back to your point. So I feel like you know. Uh, having the degree, having invested in those tools, yes, it will help you. You know, it will help you push you uh, in the market because you already have those basic. Mm -hmm. So now you're just it's like having a uh, you know having a foundation, mm -hmm. and you're building something on top of that one. So it will be easier for those who have taken that course to learn to grasp the concept it will be easier for them and of course it will be very helpful in pushing them but at the same time who sort of doesn't have a background also will be uh, you know they can do the artwork usually people say like you know art the, the, the artwork the artist is gifted I say no it's not gifted it can be learned no? it's not that Oh, he's a gifted artist. No, it's just that they have devoted so much time and effort in learning something into, you know, making their craft. So everyone can be an artist, even without the background. They can also uh, do jump into the, the the creative field and do art. But of course, because they don't have the background, it will take slightly longer because they now have to learn the basic and grasp the idea. But of course, there is. Uh, nothing in the market market as such that the ones who have done the degree will you know they'll they'll just do good and those who doesn't have a background will not do good there's nothing as such and vice versa so it's just that matter of time mm -hmm. so everyone can do even you can pursue even a cameraman can pursue <laughs> the art so it, it it's <clears throat> all to do with how much time you put it and how much love you have for that one no matter what background you are no matter your age Let's say you are uh, just starting a school, or let's say you are you are in the mid fifties, uh, sixties, whatever age it is, you can pick up at any time. It's just that you need to have the love for that one. It's it's same for I feel it's same for all the professions. You just need to have love for that one. Mm -hmm. So okay, so it would be better if you have a degree or a course in mm -hmm. that if you're thinking of seriously taking it as a profession because then you will have the basics Basic covered yeah. but that not, does not necessarily mean that you should have a degree to become a successful exactly. illustrator <laughs> i think i'm <laughs> concluding in that yeah. <laughs> okay so now exactly. as uh, one of the most loved illustrator out there you know um what would be few aspects that you would uh, recommend our aspiring illustrators mm -hmm. and designers to give highest priority to? Uh, yeah, I think uh, in terms of maybe I can share my experience through I, my experience. I think I can give some feedbacks on you know, what to do and what to do. But at the same time, like I said, I'm also learning still learning so maybe through experience wise i can be able to help them so through through experience i'm just uh at times you feel like that's not for you no? you feel you feel like giving up so the first and foremost thing is important is to keep pursuing it you know you need to be uh how, how do you say it like you know you need to keep pushing it if you feel 100 percent feel it like I want to do that. You should pursue that one. No, there will be lots of people saying you can't do this. Is uh, this is already this has already been done. This is nothing new. You'll not make money. There are a lot of people who say, but at the same time, there are a lot of people who are willing to help you. So you should not lose hope. You should keep you know pursuing your interests. Mm -hmm. And the, the 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 second thing second thing is the process. You should enjoy the process. The process should make you happy. 
even if you feel like you're, you're very passionate, you're very interested in doing that, but you're not enjoying the process, that means like, you know, either that is not for you or you need to change your process. So second thing is always enjoy the process. Then the third and uh, the, the, the most important thing is always be willing to accept feedbacks. Uh, or what we call the constructive, the, the criticisms there. Yeah. So always be willing to take that. Because I come in from the art background, I understand how much time and effort goes into making one art. I literally know, you know, the, the, the pain behind that one. So when someone comes and like, you know, says, oh, that is not good. You feel the pinch, you know, like, because I put, come on, I put in so much effort, no? You should like it because I put in my effort. <laughs> but the things, it will not work it like that, no? So, in, especially in terms of creative feel, there should always be a room for creative, uh, constructive criticism. That's how you grow. So as a person, if you want to grow in in your field or profession, no, you have to take in feedbacks, exchange ideas. So I think this three is very important. And other than this, you just enjoy. You do it. It's the right time to seize that opportunity, and you know just go for it. And in that process, if I can be of any help. That's great. If you can make on your own, that's really great. <laughs> so, yeah, but you just keep pursuing that one. So, okay. Yeah. okay um, now, one question. What we're going to do is, I'm going to ask questions or okay. just uh, give a statement and you can answer in one word. Okay, so or just one word. One sentence. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, don't feel too pressured. It's nothing <laughs> personal. Okay, so, ready? Yeah, okay. Uh, if um, if you are one of the colors in a crayon box, what color would you like to be and why? White, because it's underused color. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say you are known for apart from being a very good illustrator? Talking. <laughs> With the people who are most comfortable with, I mean, like I can talk on any topic. I think so. Basically, they say like you know, sometimes that's again that depends on how much conversation I can make with the person. So if the other person is like you know, okay, yes, then I also feel like okay. okay yes. yes. <laughs> so a conversationalist. Yeah, yeah we always would love conversationalist. <laughs> what constitutes a good design? What makes you happy? Perfect. Uh, one design or art channel or Instagram page that uh, you would like to recommend? Pascal Campion. So he's an artist. We share a similar artistic process and style. So you basically you should go and check him. Uh, he is very popular on Instagram. Okay. Okay, so now, last one, okay. you said that there lives an artist in each one of us, right? And now, teach me to create one art right now, mm -hmm. in five minutes, in which we can incorporate the story that we just built. Uh, which story? Uh, here. Uh, okay. This, this story and okay. <laughs> this conversation. Okay, so uh, you, you uh, picture... Uh, Blue sky. Okay. okay. You're picturing that one. Everybody is doing that. Okay. okay. <laughs> you picture a, a big tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Under that tree, you picture two most beautiful persons sitting down. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> What's <is> you? <laughs> I'll come in the picture after this. Okay. <laughs> then you picture somewhere in the distance uh, from a hilltop. You see a person appearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's me. <laughs> And uh, basically, the one sitting under the tree is you two waiting for me. Okay. So I'm building that. That's the story. Okay. So now we are going to have a conversation under that tree. Mm -hmm. So now, what conversation we're going to have is whatever we come had a conversation here. So basically, that's how I would build up everything. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and we would love to see a picture of that. <laughs> I'm sure, I think I can. <laughs> I promise, DJ. <laughs> I think I'm just lying. 
<laughs> okay, um, now what's next for a home-based illustrator? Is there anything exciting we can expect that uh, we should look out for? Yeah, we are working on a couple of projects. So the first project is this, this the, the book. The, we are turning this book story into an animation. Ah. So we are working together with Samu. Mm -hmm. So Samu is helping us to give the platform. And we are working together with them. So our trailer is already out. Mm -hmm. So if you want to check, it's on our page, Arts Media page. And even I've shared on my Instagram page. So it's the Dawa, the little astronaut. So the title will be the same. So that's the project, one exciting project which we are working on. And uh, another one is we are trying to get into the the the, the crafts making, like you know, the t-shirts, the mugs. So maybe in there also uh, we would like to incorporate some of my mm -hmm. arts. Mm -hmm. So that's the second one. And the third one is we are again working. Uh, simultaneously with someone on one interesting project, but you know I could I can't disclose. So yeah, so the most uh, right now we are very much passionate and looking forward to creating something very exciting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so much <laughs> that, and especially for me, like you know, uh, I would really love to get your art on a T-shirt. So I think I'll be back for that, <laughs> and we'll come back to you again when. You can disclose your most exciting <laughs> projects with us again. Yeah. Anyway, it's so much fun. Like this has been, I think, mm -hmm. one of the most enjoyable conversations yeah, I have yeah. had. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, uh, would you like to share yeah. like a few so, words or last minute message to our I think viewers? First of all, I would like to start by uh, thanking all my supporters, who, especially the the viewers. Uh, who are very positive, who I always appreciate because you know without them I wouldn't be making so much art but the way they have supported me, the way they have appreciated and taken my artworks, you know, it's I'm very fortunate in 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 one word, like I'm very fortunate, I'm very blessed. Thank you so much. And I'll always remain in debt, you know, for for uh, for helping me push forward my work, for letting me do what I do. Thank you so much to everyone. And yeah, thank you so much to you and the cameraman. So. Thank you very much once again for yeah. agreeing very to delightful. Yeah. show your face <laughs> <laughs> to us, to the people and yeah, fangirling here, but I really love your art. Thank you, thank you so and much. the one that you have on your t-shirt right oh. now, this, I think I must have liked this picture of your, this ah. art of yours, the first on Instagram, mm -hmm. and it was like last year, right? You wrote this. Yes. So I ah. had it like as my phone wall oh, the entire okay. year. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Yeah, huh? yeah it's, it's this kind of support and it's this kind of gestures which helps me to make more. No, I feel really happy when I hear this kind of very positive feedback and all and so yeah like I said uh, I, I was I think I made this uh, on one of the occasions during the, the, the COVID time where my king was uh, our king was uh, visiting different areas so we as a Buddhist uh, fell we were very blessed we still are blessed because we have the blessings of mm. their majesties. So the only thing I could do as an artist to help is like show my uh, appreciation and my you know form sort of thankful. Like we are we are very much blessed. So I made it this art mm -hmm. in terms of that one. And I think many of us we felt connected mm -hmm. to this art. So I believe uh, uh, like you said I got very much positive feedbacks and people you know asking for artworks you know so yeah. I was very delighted actually that's what, what what I wanted to do you know and it served this purpose so I'm very thankful <laughs> you have the story now we are waiting for you to work on this art and we'll buy it hopefully we can afford it <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. Yeah, the art should be affordable to everyone yeah. so that's how they connect <laughs> yeah, but thank you once again uh, sure, sure, sure. And I really hope everyone enjoyed listening to this inspiring story of um, 
Dorothy. So basically, most of them they yeah. don't know my name, so that's that's my name. <laughs> we kept it at the end. <laughs> okay, Dorji, not online as the home-based illustrator, right? If you follow home-based illustrator on Instagram, you will be great.